Lionhearts, welcome back to Hollywood. You're looking at this shirt and you're gonna see it again tomorrow because I already went out and filmed an entire vlog. You could have been watching it today, but I didn't want to do that to you because I know I've seen a lot of comments of people saying, I miss Jaw. So today is the day. Today we are going to get the Joster. You'll see what I filmed this morning with Adam and the Woo uh, tomorrow, but we're gonna go get the Joster now because I can't wait to see him. Doesn't everybody miss Jaw? There's only one jaw. Only one jaw. Let's go. Oh yeah! And Days with Jordan the Lion begins now! So before we go get jaw, I thought I would show you guys all the goodies that I brought back. Some of this stuff I'm going to be sending out to you. This thing has already paid for itself. That guy right there you will see in tomorrow's vlog and it was, it was totally worth buying. Um, I bought that and I bought this, this Trojan helmet type uh, knit hat. Both of those were about five bucks. They charged me about 200 pesos each, but I think I talked her down to like 380 or something for the pair. Then I got this, which is awesome. It's like a pencil holder from the uh, Mummy Museum. Then my buddy Adam the Woo had a birthday and I did get him a present, which I will show you. Actually, I got him two presents. Um, I'm, you know, he has been a really, really great friend since I met him. And uh, I just wanted to do something cool because I know he does not care that much about his birthday. So one of the presents I ordered him is actually at Breck's house. I'll show you when we get there. But the other is I know he's a Michael Jackson fan and I saw these socks that were just too cool. Look, it's Michael Jackson from Thriller. In, there's three different pairs of socks in there. Look at that, isn't that awesome? I know it's kind of a weird gift, but I was walking by and I looked over and I go, Eric Singer, I gotta buy those. So this three pack came with the cat, Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons. I think, uh, yeah, these were all really cheap too. Just everything was really cheap. Then of course I showed you guys I got a luchador mask. There was no way I'm going to Mexico and not getting a luchador mask. Come on. And uh, there's the heart necklace I showed you in another vlog. That's the necklace for my mom. This, uh, this pink heart, it's uh, pink heart quartz because uh, as you saw when we went to the Valenciana mine, they have so much quartz there. I just had to get something quartz. Now that I think is actually for me. This chattering, uh, chattering skull kind of necklace deal. I just loved it so much. I think I'll probably end up keeping that guy. This is one of the whistles that when I was at the pyramid, you kept hearing people playing songs on. I went ahead and bought one of those. I'm gonna send that out to somebody. Um, these are uh, Pyramid of the Sun God and Moon Gods necklaces. These are um, volcanic stones of the same thing. I believe they told me that that one is the sun and that that one is the moon. There is a keychain from the Mummy Museum. There is a magnet from Guanajuato. And uh, there we go. I think, actually, I'm missing something. Hold on, let me go find it. I'm missing two other things. Yeah, I thought these were missing. And then the others are these uh, Pyramid of the Sun and Pyramid of the Moon necklaces I bought. All that stuff that was pyramid related, I got it all there. So if I end up sending you any of this stuff, then you'll know it was at the exact location that they were based off of. So, so of course I wanted to be a little bit of a surprise. I didn't want to spoil it the last time I showed you guys, but uh, I, I mentioned to you, I'm going to give Breck one of these Kiss drumsticks for watching Jaw, but I'm giving him one of the signed ones. Yeah, I totally was going to do that. I just didn't want him to know it on the last vlog. So see a little surprise out of his face when we give it to him. there about 10 minutes away from seeing jaw all right we just made it over to Breck's house I'm gonna surprise jaw now I told Breck just leave the sliding glass door open so he can't go out through the front door so we'll see what happens is jaw here where's jaw 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 where are you couple of days my buddy give me that news give me that news give me that news
You missed me? Huh? You did? I missed you. I missed you too. Thank you. See, that's why I came back early, right there. Can I eat your tail? Hey, Jaw, can I eat your tail? You were eating it. Did you miss me? Did you have fun with Breck? You did, didn't you? I know, every, everybody loves having you around, don't they? Everybody, ah! People were telling me I have to go back and watch old videos just to see Jaw every day. You, I missed you so much, man. Look at you. <sighs> Breck has to go to work in a little bit, but we wanted to go do a little bit of an adventure while I was down here, and I had a pretty good idea. So we looked up, and it's actually pretty close to here. So what we're gonna go take a look at now is uh, Breck, John, and I are gonna go along with you guys over to uh, what's called the Tuba Tree, and the Tuba Tree is actually owned by someone that I am a big fan of. Well, actually a family that I am a big fan of, so I'll tell you about them, and I'll tell you where a lot of these instruments came from once we get over there. Let's go see the tuba tree. The gang is on a road trip. Here we go. All of us. All of us. Well, gang, we have arrived. Do you know what this is? This is a really great, crazy roadside attraction called the tuba tree. Let me tell you who started this and where all these tubas came from. This is so cool. Well, Breck just found a little bit of a clue. You can tell here there are many, many musical instruments over here. There's tubas, there's sousaphones, there's all kinds of stuff here. And how this started was a local tuba player who um, is named Stan Fries. He's actually in the Guinness Book of World Records. He managed to get 500 tuba players to all play simultaneously at Downtown Disney. Now, he's always loved music, his family loves music, and when I found out that this was his tree, I almost fell out of my chair because his son is one of my all-time favorite musicians, Josh Freeze. Josh was the drummer in the Vandals. When I was in junior high school, I went and saw um, no doubt play at an arena and they brought the vandals and the vandals had somebody in the the band it was warren's birthday and they brought a birthday cake out and they threw him through the birthday cake and they just played the greatest show i'd ever seen so i became obsessed with the vandals josh ended up i mean he, he had been playing um drums at like disneyland since he was like 13. he went on to be a great studio musician he's maybe one of the greatest if not the greatest studio drummers out there he's played for guns and roses weezer nine inch nails a perfect circle you name it he's probably played with them at some point to fill in or on a recording this is his parents house his dad taught them the love of music and these all have a crazy story one day one of his tubas didn't work so he hung it in a tree um, he said then he was walking by the local high school and on the back docks by the trash he saw that they were throwing away two sousaphones and asked if he could have them they said yeah so he hung them in the tree and he said like the next morning he came out and the next thing he knew somebody had hung a, a trombone from the tree which might be that one right there and he just never removed it he said you know I just decided to let it go he said even one day he came out here and there was a, uh, a guitar hanging from the tree and he said you know I thought when I get home from work I'll take that down and when he came home somebody had like actually stolen it but he said other than that that's the only problem they've ever had and it's the only thing that's ever been taken from here now what's funny is a lot of these have a story like um, I don't know which ones but I found an interview with him where he's talking about one of these was the tuba from the 1960s clown band from uh, Barnum and Bailey. One of these was the uh, tuba from the 1950s Radio City Music Hall and like I said he actually is in the Guinness Book of World Records. They said he also was able to smuggle his tuba to China and took it on the Great Wall and performed a solo. Ja, what do you think of the tuba tree? Huh, what do you think? You like the tuba tree? Now what's crazy is I wish I could 
walk on their property. I don't want to, I've actually heard they're extremely nice. They said like the family will come out and uh, decorate this for 4th of July and they actually come out and play tubas and like every, all the kids live in the area and it's just like a whole family neighborhood, which is so cool because like I said, I'm such a fan and to know that they support this kind of like great art. If you look in their backyard, you can actually see they have like some some steel figures and I've heard that the inside is actually pretty cool too. So it's great that like such a cool family is responsible for this and that the neighborhood is uh, is supportive of people coming out here and taking a look, you know. And it actually looks really cool. They said like at Halloween and Christmas they put lights on it and uh, perform little concerts and things like that. <laughs> That is so rad. And they said, like like I said, the family's so nice that sometimes they'll come out here and even take the photos for people. But they said, now um, they've taken all the mouthpieces out. You can't play any of these. But they said it didn't stop some of their gardeners. Um, in an interview with um, their son Jason, he said, he was inside one day and he heard some weird noise and he comes out here and he said the gardeners are hanging upside down in the tree blowing through where there used to be a blowhole just making odd noises out of it. <laughs> Breck, what do you think of this place? Isn't that awesome? This is, this is great. I'm, I'm, I especially love the uh, stuff in the backyard there. You... Oh yeah, they have some great art in the backyard. It, you can tell it's like, um, they're like metal work and one of them is actually a tuba player back there. So. Luckily I brought the camera that I think will be able to uh, to let you guys see those back there. But yeah, what a great place. I was, I was kind of hoping they would be out here, but I also don't want to disturb them. Um, but I've heard they're extremely nice, and you know what? I, um, I think they probably would be okay with it because the lock is off. Um, so I'm guessing they're cool, but I'm not gonna... I'm not going to trespass just in case. I just wanted to give them big, big props for having a cool place like this. And I think, you know, we always look for crazy roadside attractions, but to know like a pretty famous family with a great story is responsible for it, I think that just makes it so much cooler. I mean, he's played with Nine Inch Nails, Guns N' Roses. He was, you know, in Guns N' Roses throughout the early 2000s for like 10 years. So pretty awesome. And Josh is a cool dude anyway. I saw him um, on an interview with Howard Stern. And one of the things that Josh does, I don't know if you've ever heard this, Breck, on his website, he'll make these things like if you um, make a donation of a certain amount of money, he'll take you out to dinner or take you to Disneyland or gives you various things, but he donates the money to like charities and things like that. He doesn't keep it, so right. I just thought that was so cool of him. That is, that's really cool. Yeah, so there you go. We'll call this the Freeze Tuba Tree. Although there are, uh, over here, like I said, you can see saxophones and sousaphones. He said the two white sousaphones, I believe those two, were the ones that he uh, he got from the high school. Yeah, Brex enthralled. <laughs> now I just looked and this was uh, this was started in 1990, so Josh would have been in the Vandals during that time. And Breck, you, you were in the marching band and stuff. Yeah. You just said uh, you've recognized what clarinets and what I else? See, I see clarinets, I see saxophones, I see trumpets, I see uh, uh, upright basses. And a pretty cool, a pretty cool tuba player down here too. This little yeah. statue, it reminds me of some of the statues I saw in uh, in uh, Mexico recently. Hey Breck, you didn't know this was almost in your backyard, did you? I know, this is like two miles from me. That's awesome. That's what I'm here for, man, to yeah. show you what's in your backyard. Right. <laughs> and look there on the address, a little tuba. I am such a Vandals fan that um, I actually bought, they had a live record at one point. It's called Sweat Into The Oldies. And one of the first times that Adam the Woo and I hung out, we found out that we were both huge Vandals fans because of Sweat Into the Oldies and Josh is on Sweat Into the Oldies. So this was really cool, especially for me to see. Well, John and I are heading home. Good to have you back, buddy. Stuck in traffic, but we're on our way home. Well, we just got home and had some mail. Thank you, David Olszewski. I hope that's how I pronounce it. Sent me a new pop socket. My uh, my last one broke off and I was in Mexico, so now I have a new one to put on there. I thought that would be appropriate. Look, it's a shark since my, uh, my case is all blue. Couldn't find another uh, lion like that, but I guess sometimes it's good to switch it up, so now we'll be doing the shark. Are you happy to be home, my friend? 
I am certainly happy to see you. I had a great trip, but I, I would love, I was telling Breck, I wish Star Trek were real, where I could have just teleported you to wherever I am and you didn't have to do any of the flying. You would have had so much fun, bud. Well, my friends, we're gonna call it a night. Jaws wiped out, he and I have been wrestling ever since we got home, and uh, he's crashed out on the bed now, so I'm gonna call it a day here. Um, if you enjoyed this trip, our trip to Mexico, you wanna see us do more things like that, consider becoming a patron. Go to patreon.com slash Jordan the Lion, or if you wanted one of the Kiss drumsticks or the Stray Cats autograph, become a Patreon this month, and just go to that post and put which one you'd like, and we're gonna do a drawing at the end of August, and I'm gonna give those away and mail those out. So, there you go. Thank you all for watching. Have a great night. I hope you enjoyed our adventure. Goodbye. Goodbye.